<clears throat> All right. Hello, everybody. Today I'm going to show you my latest Arduino application. I got this little pulse sensor. It's, uh, it's basically called Pulse Sensor Amped from PulseSensor.com, I believe. And it's pretty sweet. I, I like it. It's nice. It's, uh, it connects to my Arduino. These uh, three cords. You, know, you get your power. You get plus, minus, and a signal line. That's pretty much all you got, and you plug it in. You've got this little light here, and I believe it works off of light resistance to uh, measure your pulse. So I hooked this thing up and uh, looked around for some code. I found different places to, uh, to find some different libraries, and you can actually go to pulsesensor.com, and that'll kind of get you pointed in the right direction. And I downloaded a bunch of their stuff, and I'll possibly put links to it later in the video. Um, but anyways, I, I used some of their examples to kind of put together my own uh, example of this thing and I created my own uh, sort of ECG or I call it a PCG, a pulse uh, cardiograph, a pulse sensor cardiograph instead of an electro cardiograph which would use electrodes. Uh, so it's not exactly the same, but basically the idea is the same. You're sensing the pulse and uh, taking that data and performing some uh, analysis on it and uh, showing it on graphs, which I'm about to show you here in a second. All right, but before I go on and show you my application, I did want to show you kind of how I prepare this thing. Uh, the whole sensor website uh, basically talked about um, sealing it because you don't want to get moisture on the back that's going to mess up your readings and possibly short it out and uh, basically you want to just cover this so it doesn't get wet or dirty from sweat so I basically just took some packaging tape and taped it up just put, took a little piece of tape wrapped it and that also kind of secures the uh, cord here so it doesn't get bent and start uh, loosening the wires there so that's just kind of how I did it. Uh, it seems to work really well. You can hold it in your fingers and it works. Um, anyway, so that's just how I did it. I'll probably possibly put a little piece of Velcro around it so you can just attach it to your finger and hold, don't have to hold on to it and make a longer cord so that you can move around and lie down <coughs> easily. But uh, anyways, that's how I prepared it. So here's my sketch running. This is uh, using Processing 3 Plus and uh, right now it's just gathering some data. You can see over here. Ah, now we've got it. It takes about 10 beats before you've got enough data here to fill up this uh, PSD graph. Now, sometimes this thing gets strange readings. It doesn't always uh, get the best readings. Uh, right now it's not doing too bad. I noticed that uh, it helps that if your hand is warm, if you're going to use your fingers, make sure your hand is warm. At least for me, I don't know if just my blood flow gets restricted to my extremities because my hands get cold, but I have noticed that when your hand is warm, it's going to work better. And uh, I've also used something to just tie it onto my finger, which seems to work well too. You don't want to press down too hard, like I'm going to squeeze right now. You see how the graph gets all small? Um, so you're not getting a good reading because the, the blood flow is being constricted. So I'm going to loosen it up. So I just learned to do this from testing it for so long. Um, instead of having it strapped to my finger and then having to take it off and do a bunch of typing, uh, I just use this little hold on to it method and I've just trained my fingers not to pinch too tight. So anyways, uh, you can see it's it's working pretty good right now, showing my pulse at uh, I don't know, around 100 or so. Now the 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 beats per minute here. This is a 10 beat average. This is data that's being produced by the pulse sensor module. Uh, you could also figure it out yourself. You could do it by the uh, IBI, the interbeat interval or resting rate, if you will. You could use that to calculate your own. Uh, beats per minute if you don't want to use something different. I think they're using 10 beats per minute in this calculation. Not totally certain on that, but I think that's what they're doing. 
Anyways, kind of show you a little bit of what's going on here. Uh, this is basically your main uh, graph. This is just showing the power the sensor is uh, uh, giving us here, and it's giving your your peaks and your troughs with your heartbeat. So it looks like an ECG, something you might see in the hospital or on any movie that you might watch that's got some sort of hospital scene. You always see these things, and it'll flatline and that sort of thing. So I kind of built it in a similar fashion so that if you let go, it flatlines and freezes all the data so you can kind of get a little snapshot and see what's going on. Oh, there, sometimes it'll start doing its own anomalous data. And, you know, that's that's just because it's a light sensor and it's getting light readings. So I'm going to try and get it working again here. Not hold on too tight. There we go. So we're back to just reading my pulse. And uh, you can also see over here where we had some anomalous readings. It just Usually this is going to be pretty steady. It's not going to change that much. Uh, same thing here. You shouldn't see these all these weird dips too often. That means you're getting some weird anomalous readings here. Uh, the pulse sensor is probably counting too many heartbeats or not enough heartbeats. Usually it's too many in this particular application anyways. And you can just see it's running along. Now the uh, examples that I have from PulseSensor.com, and maybe I'll show you them later, uh, which would ha have a running wave, which is nice. It looks, you know, it's visually appealing. It's kind of nice, but if you really want to analyze and look at the waveform, it's hard to do that when it's moving constantly. So this is this is a different way of uh, looking at the waveform, where it's stationary. You can actually examine the peaks and troughs really well. And, uh, I don't know, just in my, for me, I think that's easier if you're really going to analyze it. The other way is visually appealing, but, again, the same thing on these graphs. That they just kind of move along instead of uh, the data, all the data moving. You know, it makes it a lot harder to actually analyze it and take a look at it. Now, I'll kind of go over some more of these graphs. I went over the, the beats per minute. This is just showing your beats per minute over 150 beats, and it starts over. This is the interbeat interval, like the peak between peak and peak, so to speak. And uh, this is the same thing; it just keeps going until 150 beats, then it just starts over. Now, this is a graph that I kind of pulled out of one of the pulse sensor examples. Um, although their data, just I don't know, it seemed odd to me the way it was set up, the way they had their thing set up. It was drawing dots all over the place. So I kind of built my own version and uh, made sure everything was a little bit more better behaved, a little more well behaved. And I think it is, um, anyways. And you can see it here. It's just drawing out dots. Um, when it gets to 500 beats or 500 dots, it'll start erasing older dots. So Right now, 500 is the max. You can change that in the variables in the code, uh, which I'll show you later. And, uh, yeah, right, we just hit 500 beats, so it's got its max number of dots. You might even start to see a couple disappear. Oh, there's a couple that's starting to go. So, anyways, that kind of gives you a, a neat uh, plot diagram there, chart of uh, the frequency. Now, this is basically really, really. This is not true heart rate frequency. Like, uh, for example, if you're beating at 60 beats per minute, your uh, hertz would be one <laughs> because you're basically uh, one cycle per minute, or uh, actually one beat per second. Um, so that should be one. But if you look over here, when this is at a thousand, which is basically one second, this will be at around 0.5. So this is basically half of that. So if you understand that, um, that's one thing, you know, that's the way their graph was set up. And I've seen it done this way before, so I didn't change it. And, uh, I mean, you could, if you know what you're doing, get in there and change that code if you want. Um, basically, you just, instead of, you know, cutting it in half, you leave it full values. Which is pretty much what I did over here in the uh, Spectrum uh, graph. This is basically similar to a graphic equalizer, equalizer, excuse me, <clears throat> except it's taking heart rate 
uh, waveform instead of audio waveform and converting that uh, data into different uh, spectrum frequencies. So you've got 0.5 hertz, 0.1, 0.15, all the way down to 0.45. And it's only using half the waveform data, so it basically stops at 0.5. And this is just your standard power spectrum graph, although I don't divide it by 2. That's why it goes all the way up to 4,000. Um, yeah, it's just one half. One knows you could you could divide this by two and make this graph go up to two thousand. It'd be basically the same thing. Um, really makes no difference um, unless you you know those values are actually you're using those values for some reason and they need to be different. You could get in there and change those values pretty easily in the code. Uh, so anyways, this is just taking the data. It's taking uh, ten beats at first waits for about 10 beats and then it starts filling up an array which gets passed through a fast Fourier transform and that's what is used to produce the spectrum data it's basically the same sort of thing like I said that you might use in a uh, graphic equalizer or for example Shazam they, they would use a fast Fourier transform to convert the audio form data into a uh, a digital form, um, then map out the frequencies and see if they uh, equal the same thing as another song, basically pattern matching based on those things. So it's got some nice real world applications, the fast Fourier transform. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of the mathematics behind it because it's extremely complicated and if you really want to know you can find out there's a lot of good YouTube videos out there, lectures by professors and all sorts of great stuff. You can learn all about it if you want to. Um, it's pretty complicated mathematics, but uh, you know, once you wrap your head around, it's not that it's not that hard to understand. Anyways, uh, that's what you got here. And there's actually some companies out there that kind of use this sort of information uh, in meditation. And actually, that kind of brings us over here. You got your low frequency and your high frequency power graph. So low frequency would be these three bars here. Anything that's uh, equal to or under 0.5 or 1.15. <clears throat> Everything above that is counted as high frequency. All right. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to restart this thing. I was interrupted. Anyways, it'll give me a chance to show you how it gathers data. As you can see over here, once we start getting some beats, it starts to gather that data. And then it displays the spectrum data and it starts drawing this graph and gives you the percentages. Now, I was saying before that uh, this is the low frequency range, everything from 0.15 and below. And everything above that, consider high frequency. So we take the average of these three and the average of these six. And that gives us our values over here. And that's what we use to uh, draw out this graph here. And also these values here. And uh, as you can see, as your low frequency goes up, this goes up. And if you have high frequency, that goes up. So you can use this uh, data. A lot of companies use this sort of stuff to help athletes. Uh, in training and also to help uh, people in meditation I guess the idea would be that when your low frequency is higher you're in a more uh, receptive state I guess for that sort of thing anyways um, hope you enjoyed the video uh, and uh, if you liked it uh, please like the video and uh, subscribe and stay tuned my next video on this will be the actual source code. I'm going to go over the Arduino source code and I'm going to go over the source code for processing that uh, you see here that's uh, this application. Anyways, thanks for watching my video and we'll see you next time.